Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to talk about my first impressions about my LG A775 motherboard, the ASUS P5QD Turbo. Uh, this is not gonna be the VRM overview, this is just my first impressions, uh, what I did in the first days that I had it, and my thoughts, my very, very rambly thoughts about this motherboard. So let's just get it out of the way. Um, my first impressions with this motherboard, they are bad, extremely bad. I have had so many problems with this motherboard and it is just, I would not advise to get this motherboard. And it's not even the one that I wanted. I wanted a different board, but I wasn't able to get that one, so I took the next best one, which was unfortunately this. So, um, I talked in the past about how I'm not extremely fond of ASUS and how I do not particularly like their motherboards but in reality I actually never used one of them until now. I only ever just heard of friends who used them or just reviews of them and yeah. Then when I bought this board I was like I should give ASUS a chance to show that their boards are better than I thought. Sadly they did not convince me otherwise. They actually convinced me that they are worse than I thought. So, um, yeah, where do I even begin with this? So, the main problem with this motherboard, and that's actually not a design problem, maybe it is, I don't know what it, what's causing it. The main problem with this motherboard is that if you would put it in a system like this, it would not work. It would not boot, it would not even post, it would just power on and then do nothing. And the reason why that is, is there are memory sticks in slots A1 and A2. Now it will work. Now the bot will work. And you see the problem. It is in single channel now. And I also removed 2 gigabytes of the total 4 gigabytes, which is already not that much. This motherboard does not work in dual channel. These two channels, I think I got a stick working in them once, but I wasn't able to reproduce it. So those might be just dead. And to be fair, it could just be this one board that has this problem. But I think I have evidence it's not. So, I think it's story time. <sighs> About a year ago, or more than that actually, a classmate of mine um, wanted to upgrade his PC to a new case and a an ATX motherboard. He used a ITX board from Gigabyte before and he wanted more than one expansion slot. So we went to eBay and he got an ASUS Z97 board. I don't remember which one it was. So he got it and he came to me to help him upgrade his PC. Uh, we installed everything and tried to boot it up and it powered on and nothing happened. Channels A1 and A2 were dead. If he would put a stick in either channel A1 or A2, the board would not post. We verified this with several RAM kits. Channels A, A1 and A2 were dead. So he had to use his uh, 16 gigabytes in single channel in B1 and B2. So I thought that's just a one-off. Maybe a sketchy motherboard he got on eBay. And I didn't really think about it. Then, a couple months ago, a friend of mine wanted to buy 
AZ77 system to use uh, to overclock a 2700K and then later have an i5 3570K in it. And he chose a Z77 ASUS WS P P8 Z77 something board, one of the higher end ones with like WS stands for workstation, so one of the workstation boards, I guess. And he installed it. And as he was installing it, I was jokingly telling him about the problem that I had, and told him like, "Yeah, watch out, channel A1 and A2 are gonna be dead." He built the system, tried to power the board on, and I guess you already know what happened. The board powered on, and it didn't post. Nothing happened. Channels A1 and A2 were dead, again, on his board also. His board also only has B1 and B2 working. He only can use single, single channel. And he has several CPUs. He has more than one CPU for this. It's, it's not the CPU, it's not the socket. It's the RAM just doesn't work. And then I thought, okay, that's two boards with the exact same problem. But I mean, yeah, it's probably just a giant coincidence. It's not like ASUS boards are like prone to have their RAM slots die. What a fool I was. So I got this board, which is DDR2. The other two boards were DDR3. This is a core to quad Q9450. The other ones were i7 2700K and i7 4790K. These were completely different motherboards. The only, the only parallel between them is that they were all ASUS boards. And they all have this problem. I am at a point where I like, I'm still not saying that this absolutely is what it is, but I'm at a point where I will not recommend to buy a used ASUS board, ever. Just don't do it. Three boards have the exact same problem. I don't know why. The only thing I know is the memory channels are dead. You will not get a post if you put RAM in them. And I still hope that there's some kind of pepcag, uh, like problem exits between keyboard and computer or screen or something, there. whatever. And I, I, I still hope that there's something that I am wrong. I hope that I'm wrong because if I'm not, 100% of the used ASUS ports that I had, that I was involved with had dead memory channels. Now that might be a giant coincidence, there might be a lot of ASUS boards that are used and completely fine, but the evidence I have points otherwise. And so I'm at a point where I'm gonna say do not buy a used ASUS board. Go with MSR Gigabyte. I have a used Gigabyte board, it's completely fine. People have bought a used MSI boards, those were completely fine. It is only ASUS boards that I have ever heard to have this problem. And when I like, when I got the board, when I tried to boot it up, it was literally just in my head, the entire story unfolded again. It was like, oh no, it has the same problem. Are you absolutely kidding me? And it's fair to say that my disappointment was immeasurable and my day was completely ruined. Even the day after, I was so pissed off. I basically didn't do anything with the system, which is why there's no no VRM overview yet. It's it's just this is a giant piece of trash. It is disappointing. It is it is just why. And I think I'm gonna have a video, a, a different video coming up about this is not the only thing that makes me dis because this could be genuinely just a very unlucky thing. This could be just Yes, maybe all three of the boards that I was involved with just 
happen to have this defect and 100% and like all the other ones are fine. But I do have other reasons to dislike Asus and I think I'm gonna make a video about that. Like actually right now, um, I've been talking on Discord in an overclocking channel with someone who has a Strix 2080 Ti and they found out that that card, which is really, really expensive. Uh, at the time I bought my card, my 2080 Ti, which is an Aerox Extreme, the Strix was more than 200 euros more expensive. And I found out that the Strix, or at least one version of the Strix, uses the non-A GPU for the TU-102, which is binning reject, basically. A GPU that NVIDIA already marks as doesn't overclock good. And Asus puts these on the Strix. Not even the dual or the turbo one, which is a blower. I, I mean, okay, I think I've se I've seen that the to that the turbo one is also a non-A, but the Strix. Apart from the Matrix, that is their top end card. And even if it's the lowest tier of Strix, it's still the Strix. It's still the Strix PCB. It's still the Strix cooler. You get a non-A GP with that. My Aorus Extreme is, was at the time more than 200 euros less expensive and I got an A GPU. Admittedly, I got unlucky with it, but it still overclocks significantly better than that non-A GPU. And that's just one of the many more reasons why I don't like Asus that much. I was genuinely trying. I was hoping that this bot would be good. I was hoping that I would be wronged to say that Asus isn't that bad. But <sighs> there's still a slight chance that all this is just a coincidence and that Asus is completely fine. But for now, now I'm at the point where I say, I, I will straight up say, do not buy Asus unless I get convinced otherwise that they're actually good. And... Yeah, I'm, I'm just disappointed. I'm very disappointed, but let's get, let's go away from Asus as a whole and go back to this motherboard. So I was talking first impressions. So two of the RAM slots are defective. I can either use two gigs of these Corsair uh, Dominators, which are 1066 megahertz, uh, CL55515, 2.1 volts. 2 gigs is not that much. I do not have a I do not have the ability to install Windows 7 or Win XP on uh, on this thing. I only have Win 10 and 2 gigabytes of RAM with Windows 10 is very very borderline. Even 4 gigabytes is very very borderline. I do have some more DDR2 sticks which I'm going to right now those are these two. One of these, this one right here, is a two gigabyte one. So if I use these two, I can get three gigabytes. But I mean, you can already see from the green PCB, these are slow. These are 667 megahertz. They don't even state what timings they are. They are very slow. You're not gonna get good performance with these. You will get good performance with these Corsair ones, but I can only use two gigabytes of them. And yeah, um, that's, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm not like, I'm pissed off. I'm, I'm just pissed off. And I think I'm going to try, like I, I messaged the eBay seller that eBay seller said it, like they used different RAM on this, like OCZ something, eight gigabytes they used in this. That apparently worked. Then they just put these Corsair Dominator ones into the board when they sold it. So this config was untested, but like I used all the other sticks like these that I have in those channels, could not get it to boot. I think I booted once, but then never again. So yeah. I, so things I could try is maybe a BIOS update. That's one of the things I haven't tried, but like I tried 
loading default settings. I tried setting a really low clock and timings manually, then trying to boot with all of them. I tried setting the north bridge voltage uh, all the way up to 1.4 volts. Didn't do anything. Uh, I even tried different power supplies, even different coolers, because I read that mounting pressure could affect this. I used different graphics cards and yeah, uh, didn't, didn't do anything. And um, yeah, so let's get to some more first impressions of this. So let's get to the less disappointing things about this. So um, the CPU I have in this, uh, as I already said, is a Intel Core to Quad Q9450. Um, it's not that high up the product stack, but it's noticeably faster than a Q6600, for example. So this is one of the later quad to, quad to quads. It does come with this into stock heatsink, which might look like a problem, but actually the temps have been fine. I haven't tried overclocking it yet because I was just so pissed at this thing. Um, so I don't know if the temps are gonna get worse when I overclock it. If they do, I'm gonna have to hook up the custom loop that I have to this. But for now, the interstock cooler seems to be fine. Except for one thing. See those? Those markings on my hand again? Like here? That's that's a wound. That's another wound. This heatsink is insanely sharp. This um, This fan right here. It doesn't even have to spin that fast. It's idle temps. I cut myself so many times on this. Do not get your hands into this stock cooler. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, the temps have been fine, even though I kind of, I literally bled for this thing. <laughs> um, but that's not that annoying actually. Like I uh, sticking my fingers into work into running PCs, I, I I should expect to hurt myself at some point. So um, then uh, I can sort of give you a look at the VRM uh, because the PWM controller is right here. That's another one of those rebranded ASUS things, which is another thing that pisses me off about them. But this one actually has a public data sheet where it says that this can operate up to eight phases. And since we do have eight inductors around the, uh, the CPU, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that this is an eight phase, which is pretty nice. Um, there's no SOC phase because, well, you have a North Bridge here that's external, that has its, its own VRM over here. So yeah, that, all those eight phases should go into the CPU, as far as I know. Uh, I don't know which MOSFETs they have, I haven't removed the heat sinks. Like that's, I'm, I'm gonna do another PCB overview video so you don't have to listen to my ramblings about why I hate this thing. And um, yeah. Then um, I don't know if it actually works with PC Express 3.0 devices, uh, like graphics cards, you only have this one X16 slot. Um, I did it, like I did manage to boot with a GT240 and a GTX 580, which are PCI Express 2.0. It did not want to boot with an HD7770 or a GTX 650, which are 3.0. This might be doable with a BIOS change. If I put the BIOS into, there should be something like PCI Express Gen or compatibility thing. If not, it's just gonna be stuck with a GTX 580, which is not that big of a problem actually. Like the CPU is very old compared to the, well, not that much actually. I think the GPU is from 2008 or something, and the 580 is from 2010. Uh, yeah, but I, I guess the 580 is fine. It's just very bulky and loud. <laughs> I would rather just use a lower power Newark GPU, but hey, okay, that's, it's it's fine, I guess. Um, then, uh, BIOS, the BIOS of the board is 
seems fine. Like, this board is so old that you don't really have your, like, if you look a, into a BIOS today, you immediately know what vendor the board is from, because every vendor has their own layout and graphical effects. Uh, this board just has the plain old blue on gray BIOS, and even has a socketable BIOS chip, which I actually like. So if the BIOS gets bricked, you can just change it out. Um, and, yeah, so... I don't know how much customization went into the BIOS. It does resemble uh, how ASUS does their BIOS nowadays, but I don't know if that's just a coincidence or if ASUS actually made this that way. It's It could be better because like all the overclocking settings are just thrown into one big menu and you have to scroll down a whole bunch before you find the settings you want. You could do that a lot better, like for example, like, People say Gigabyte BIOS is bad, but I actually like Gigabyte BIOS a lot, because like, you want to change voltage, you go to voltage settings, you want to change memory clocks and timings, you get to memory settings, you want to change your CPU settings, you get to CPU settings. You might have to escape out and then go to voltage settings if you want to adjust your V-core after you adjust your clock, but apart from that, I think Gigabyte BIOS is actually pretty good. This one, well, yeah, it's just had, it just has everything in one big list and you're going to have to scroll a whole bunch and maybe you'll miss something and, uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's it's usable, it's just, I would prefer it the other way. Um, but it's it's okay, I guess. I'm going to have, I'm going to talk more about that once I actually get to overclocking this. Um, yeah. And then one thing that I also like is the front panel connectors down here. Because those have, um, yeah, there are markings on the board, what goes where. That is very, very nice, because I don't like looking up um, manuals to, like, see where the, H, uh, where the hard drive LED goes. Um, yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, and then... Yeah, um, let's talk some more about the board. So I.O. Yeah, I.O. is not, not that great compared to today's standards, but you do get six USB ports, one I Firewire, I think. You get two PS2 ones uh, that looks like an optical something. You get one LAN, which is probably gigabit, and you get your standard audio section like the I.O. And, and yeah, you get an eSATA, which I think that's eSATA. Which, yeah, I'm, I mean, the I.O. is not, it doesn't scream high-end, but this board also wasn't high-end. So, I guess that's fine. Um, then, yeah, so you, you do get four fan headers. So you get a four pin for CPU here, then you get two free pins here and then another free pin over here. That's it pretty much. Don't see anything more on this. Um, that's okay-ish, but considering that today most of the cases have some sort of fan control in there, uh, in the, in, integrated into them, yeah, that's, that's fine. And then, yeah, um, kind of running out of things to say right now about first-hand experience of this. Like, a lot, of, a lot of time was just trying to get it to boot, because, like, it came with all the four sticks in it, of course, and it didn't boot, and I just kind of tried troubleshooting it, and that took basically the entire day, because... First I thought the RAM stick is dead, then I thought the CPU is dead. Um, and then I just kind of found out, yeah, okay, it's just the RAM slots. Because the CPU does look kind of sketchy, because uh, I did find some thermal paste on the pads on the CPU, and also it's kind of scratched up and just in not that great of a condition compared to the other CPUs that I have. Um, but the CPU works. Uh, and yeah, like I'll... I also verified that all of the RAM sticks work individually. Um, one thing that's interesting about them 
is there are two different ICs on these because um, at least Corsair does it. I don't know which other vendors do it. Uh, Corsair has a thing, just version or RAM version. And the number they, they put there tells you which IC you have. So for example, on DDR4, if you have 4.31, that's Samsung B die. If you have 4.32, that's Samsung C die. If you have 5.32, I think that was AFR or CJR. And then on here, we have two sticks with 1.6 and two sticks with 5.1. And um, yeah, so these are two different ICs, even though they run the exact same timings and clocks. And also what happened is these, if, if you would mix these ICs, the board would not work. I don't know if it just doesn't work or if it was something else. Like I, I did a lot of things while trying to troubleshoot it. I could just have screwed up something in the settings. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> So that's kind of interesting. And um, yeah, so first impressions of this motherboard. They're not good. They are not, not good. I will, um, yeah, I was thinking about asking the eBay seller to kind of give me a slight refund because Half of the RAM is not working, but like the eBay seller gave me, gave me that one answer and they were kind of saying like, it wasn't really clear. I, it kind of sounded like they were considering sending me some more DDR2, but that won't fix the problem since the motherboard is the problem. So yeah, I don't know what the seller's going to do. I think I'm just... If the seller doesn't do anything more, I'm I think I'm just going to try to uh, get another board and just sell this one. I want to get rid of it. I, I I just don't like it. Like the the entire plan of this was to just just have some fun, like core to quads. No one uses these anymore. They are slow. They are very, very slow. And I found this out, like with the GTX 580, which is like, I, I found some questionable sources for it, but I found a website that compared the GTX 580 to a GPU in a smartphone that's very similar to the one in my OnePlus 70 Pro, which is filming this here right now. And the 580 is about as fast as that. I don't know how much truth there is to that. But yeah, the 580 is very slow. It, it could be true. And even with the very slow 580, the CPU was still hitting. Like, I I tried to play Borderlands pre sequel on this. It did not work. It did not work that great. The CPU was very, very much a bottleneck. Minecraft did work on this, obviously. Right? Like, Minecraft works on everything. Minecraft worked well. But... Well... Yeah. Like, it's slow, and the entire plan was just, I want to get a board that's reasonably reasonably good at overclocking. I want to get some kind, any core to quad, and I want to overclock it. I want to overclock the core to do. I have the Pentium D if that's still working. And, yeah. And then I got this. Like, I thought it's gonna be fine. I knew it's not the best board, which it isn't. But I was at least expecting that it would work. Not not like this with like one, f like one foot in the grave, basically. Like, two gigs of RAM. Like, I only have one two gig stick. Every other DDR2 stick I have is one gigabyte. It's... Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, it's Yeah, so I guess my plan for this is I'm 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 gonna wait a couple more days what the seller decides to do. And then I'm just gonna try to flip it. It's just like I'm kinda pissed off because I paid 
what I think is a lot of money for this board. I paid 60 bucks for this. Plus, like, it was one big package. The board, the CPU, the, the cooler, and the RAM. 60 bucks. Plus shipping. No, not... Yeah, 60 bucks with shipping. Um, and the thing is, the thing I was trying to get before, because this was my second choice, I was... Uh, there was an auction... Um, for a Q6600 plus a tower heatsink, which was much more powerful than this. Uh, a Gigabyte board, which I'm not so sure how the VRAM was. Like, the Gigabyte website kind of stated a 4 times 3 phase something design, which, like, uh, if, they, if they do it like that, it's not going to be a 12 phase, is it? Um, so, yeah, maybe it's a very powerful 4 phase. Or something, or like they use triplers or something. Like, if they're doublers, they're quadruplers. I don't know if they are triplers, but yeah, that board looked better because it had more PCI Express slots, it has it had more substantial heat sinks. It was actually ATX because, like, this is not ATX. You, you see the screw holes, there's one, there's one. If it would be ATX, you would have another one here, but it is slightly shorter than ATX. So you only have six screw holes, which is once you plug the 24 pin cable and try to get it out, it flexes the board really, really badly. And actually, one thing is that, that I also noticed is, I can't, don't know if you can see it, but the board, yeah, you can see it right here. The board is also flexing. And I was kind of concerned when I saw that. But when I removed the heat, I was, Thinking first, thinking the heat sink is making it flex, but when I removed the heat sink, it was still flexing. So, yeah, I guess it it has been like this for a long, long time. Maybe that's why the memory channels are dead. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wait, maybe a week, uh, for the eBay seller to do something or to do nothing. Then I will try to, yeah, I will just try to sell the motherboard and try to get a better one. And yeah, the thing is just my budget is kind of limited right now because I, I did buy this for 60 bucks. And then I did also buy a, a, a power supply for 45 bucks because, well, I need an extra power supply. The one I'm using for this is actually the one that was in Zoros Alpha before. The 401 be quite uh, pure power 10. And the one I bought was a system power B9. So the, basically a system power 9, but in uh, the bulk variant, the OEM variant, which is not non-powder coded, it has ketchup mustard cables. It didn't even come in a box, it just came in um, some bubble wrap. So it's very cheap, but same internals, and it's 350 watts. And I put this into the server because, like, there's a the locked i5 in there, and at the moment an RX 70 that's not gonna pull more than 350 watts. This is gonna, if I put a 580 in it, and uh, an overclocked um, quarter quad. So... Yeah, um, and like, yeah, for so per month, I have a budget of a hundred bucks. I already went over that. So if I sell this board with the defect, I'm not gonna get that much for it. Um, so, yeah, I might have to wait till next month. But and until then, I may, like I could just try to get raw clock speed on this board and like see what it can do. But I do not want to keep this. I want to get rid of this board. I don't. I don't like it. I want to get one that has working dim slots um, and probably also a better feature set. Like, the VRM doesn't look that bad. I don't know which MOSFETs it's using, so they could be kind of a nasty surprise. I, I, I do a... I do a VRM overview. 
but not today. I'm still too pissed off at this thing. But yeah, um, this video is getting way too long. Yeah, so those are my first impressions of this board. Very, very unfortunate. I'm really feeling like I, I'm not giving a Zeus. Like I, I'm. I really feel like I'm unfair to a Zeus, but really, I have so many different things that make me upset about their stuff. So, yeah. But that's that's gonna be the topic of another video about my opinion about Asus. So, this has been the first impression of the Asus P5QD Turbo motherboard for LGA775. Sadly, I cannot give you a recommendation for this. Sadly, I will tell you to not bother with this at all. Because it is bad. Really, really bad. And if you have the same luck that I have, or my friends, you're gonna get one with two dead memory channels. <sighs> yeah. So, that's it for the video. Don't have anything more to say. It's just, yeah. So, goodbye. Thank you all for watching this longer than usual video. Hope you at least could enjoy it. I did not. I do not enjoy a, a single second with this board. So, yeah. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.